I don't know about where you guys live, but here in the Northeast, things are finally heating up. It's starting to feel like summer, and of course, with summer comes the heat. So today, I want to talk about fantasy books that feel like summer, aka fantasy books that have a hot setting so that when you are sitting outside roasting in the sun reading you feel transported to the world that you are reading about. I love making like seasonally themed videos. I've definitely done summer themed videos in the past but that's more with like contemporary books because you know there's so many summery contemporary especially like rom-coms but I don't think I've ever made a summer themed fantasy video. So I'm going to give you guys some recommendations for books that I think just have the perfect summer feeling that you can really just immerse yourself while reading in the sun. And I am going to break this up by books that I've already read and books that are on my TBR and maybe this will motivate me to read them this summer since I think it will pair perfectly with the weather. So the first book I had to recommend to you guys today is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This is one of the first books that got me back into reading YA in 2015, this book along with the Red Queen books, and I've been so scared for the ending that I have not, I have not picked up the last book. It actually might be a good idea for me to do like a reading vlog, maybe to read this entire series and give you guys my thoughts. Let me know if you'd like to see that down below because that would definitely motivate me to finish up the series, but I read the first three books and like absolutely adored them, so it, I'm just scared. I'm just scared. In this book there is a desert like setting so to me desert just hot, arid, dry like if you're maybe not in the northeast because the northeast is very humid but definitely other parts of the world have summer is it like that and again that like desert sand going everywhere in the wind kind of feeling reminds me of summer and I did read these books in the summer so they also just like personally I connect them with summer in my mind. So in An Ember in the Ashes, which is a much beloved series, we follow Laya and she lives in the scholars area with her family under the Martial Empire and her brother is arrested for treason and these rebels approach her and they're like if you go undercover for us we will help bring your brother back and so she goes undercover into the military academy of this empire and there she meets elias who is the top student at this military academy but also the most unwilling and is really questioning everything that the empire stands for and their paths collide and it is so so amazing like the series is so good and i'm actually kind of mad at myself for not finishing it yet because it's just beautiful and again if you're looking for something to match the summer heat definitely pick this up next is a book that i picked up last summer and this definitely feels like an Italian summer book because the island that this book takes place on is inspired by Italy and you see like lemon trees on the cover so there's a lot of lemon imagery and overall that kind of environment so you see like lemon on the cover and I have the BNN edition that also has the lemon on the hardback and you see like the leaves and I was feeling fancy with this book so I did match my tab color it's like green and yellow to match the overall vibes of this book but I picked this one up and I was obsessed with it. It was so good. So Alessa has this gift from the gods and her touch is supposed to magnify the powers of other people. So she's known as the Fenestra and she's like the super special and revered person in their society because every generation there is like this swarm, this like plague, think about it as locusts that come out in every certain amount of years but it's demons. And the only way to stop the demon swarm is this Fenestra magnifies the powers of her chosen Finestro, I think it's called, it's called her chosen partner and what basically happened to Alessa is her touch is kind of out of control and she, when you become like a partner like you literally get married and she's basically like killed all of her partners up until now so she's desperate to survive because there are some rebel groups that are like what is this woman doing like she's clearly not fit for this position and she goes and she hires a bodyguard and this bodyguard is named Dante and there's rebellion brewing outside of the gates but Dante's own dark secrets might be her own downfall so it was so good and again it's set on this like Sicily Italian inspired island so there's definitely like a lot of warm summer imagery 
in this setting um very kind of inspired by ancient sicily but i thought was really cool was even though it's inspired by ancient sicily like there is a lot of diversity in this novel and it's not you know like so inspired by ancient sicily that there's like no diversity so i thought it was pretty cool that it takes inspiration from an old place but kind of has this cool diverse spin on it which i appreciated and um this ended on a bang the next one is coming out in december and i'm very excited because i really really enjoyed this one next we have another ya superstar which is children of blood and bone by tomi adiemi i mean when this book came out it would explode it it exploded you could not watch a booktube video without seeing a children of blood and bone mentioned and of course i read it and it was amazing so we follow Zeli and she remembers a time when the Orisha hummed with magic and there are like all different kinds of like magic users that you can be. So under the orders of a ruthless king, all of the magi were targeted and basically all of the magic is now gone. Now she has a chance to bring back magic and with the help of a rogue princess, she must evade a crown prince that is hell bent on eradicating magic once and for all. Again, this was an amazing novel. There is a reason it was so hyped and it definitely is set in a warm climate the kingdom of orisha is a desert so it is hot <laughs> i'm i'm like running out of ways to describe a desert but a lot of these have desert settings and you you all know deserts are hot look at this cool hardback design they really snapped with this one taking a bit of break from the deserts we have the bridge kingdom which is actually set in this like lush jungle world which I ha don't know if I've read a lot of books set in jungles now that I think about it. I mean, this is beautiful. It's a new adult fantasy romance, independently published. And so it's so cool. We have Lara and she is going to marry the king of the bridge kingdom. So I have the second book that has like the picture of what the kingdom looks like. So there's like literally this long bridge that runs through the bridge kingdom and it controls all of the trade like north to south and it is also a world that is hit with like uncontrollable storms so the bridge is really the only safe way for travel to go because these storms will just like destroy all the ships so basically all the merchants and stuff have to go through this bridge and Lara was raised in this kingdom to the south of the bridge kingdom and so she's basically raised to be a spy and to go in and to like sow chaos within the bridge kingdom and obviously report all of the king's movements back to her father and she of course goes to the bridge kingdom which is very lush dense jungle surrounded by all of these storms and she begins to really question everything that she has been raised to believe her and her sisters were all raised in this like desert compound where they were taught the art of like spying and combat and all that stuff so she begins to see things in a new light when she leaves that compound and goes to the bridge kingdom so so good i loved it so much um i also have the traitor queen which is the sequel but yeah you can kind of see like I think this is the cover that's kind of in the more uh, desert part of the world and obviously this one is set in the more jungle part of the world but again jungles hot and humid so we got some humidity now in our settings but love 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 this one there is also a follow-up series that I have not yet read but obviously it's set in the same world so it has those same summer vibes okay we're going back to deserts we have The Princess Will Save You by Sarah Henning, and this is like a gender-bent princess bride retelling where our girly Amara is the strong one and the stable boy that she's in love with, Luca, he's kind of helpless and she has to save him and I love that dynamic. Sorry, her name is Emma Randi. A warring kingdom comes and captures Luca, her love, and she goes on a mission for revenge because she is a woman with a plan. And you don't really get it from the description, but this kingdom that it is set in is like a sand desert world. So again, it's hot. There's a lot of heat in the description. You know, you just feel like you're in a desert land while you're reading this book. So again, a good summer choice. I read this first one. I really liked it. I need to continue on with the series, which is like the story of my life. But I would definitely do more of a reread. I think there's three or four books covers are beautiful um uh, yeah story of my life right so what is more summary than pirates so we're gonna move into the pirate section of this video so the first up i have is defy the night by bridget kemmerer which i think has like it's kind of you know it's not like outright summary but it's definitely like warm in this setting i think it's been a while since i've read it but the second book defend the dawn 
takes place on the ocean, so it is very piratey and summery. But I do not really want to give a description of this one because I don't want you guys to be spoiled, but I think just knowing that it's set on the high seas is enough for now. But in the first book, Defy the Night, we follow Tessa along with her best friend Wes. There are basically these moon flower petals that prevent people from getting this really bad plague and however there is like a problem in the way that they're distributed throughout the kingdom where basically the poor people are not getting enough so tessa and wes go and they steal from the rich who have a surplus and distribute it to the poor people of this kingdom it's a very much robin hood inspired book however when the unthinkable happens to wes tessa takes it upon herself to do something about it and marches straight into the castle but what she finds inside is not what she was expecting. I loved, 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 loved this book when I read it. Definitely my favorite, Bridget Kimmerer. The second book, Defend the Dawn. Like I said, it took us to new places on a pirate ship. I'm not going to describe to you how we get to that pirate ship, but it was amazing. And if you're looking for a summery, piratey read, this is your girl. And so now I think everyone might know these books that I'm about to mention for the pirate theme. But pirates are very on brand for summer. So the first is a duology, Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. These are the first books I read by her and I am obsessed with her. And she's coming out with a third book in the series, Vengeance of the Pirate Queen. I think that's what it's called in the fall. And I'm so incredibly excited and they are getting repacked covers. I'll put a picture up here of what the repack cover looks like and the new cover. But oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm going to add them to my collection. But of course, I still have these beautiful originals and I just am very happy. I'm a huge Trisha Levenseller fan. She's definitely like one of my top YA authors for sure. So in this duology, we follow Alosa and she's the, the daughter of the Pirate King. She is on a mission to find this ancient map to unlock the treasure of all treasures and she kind of does the unthinkable and she lets herself get captured by the enemy and so they think they have her captured but she is just as ruthless as a pirate as them and she outsmarts them and outmaneuvers them and it's so much fun. I love the romance in this one too. Like ugh, so much tension, so good. And of course we also have the sequel Daughter of the Siren Queen and I just love Alosa. She's such a badass pirate and this will put you in the summer mood. It will. Okay, another pirate duology that I think mostly all of booktube knows about is Fable and Namesake by Adrian Young because I mean, has there been a more like perfect two book cover like spread? It's so cool. And again, this was one that I read and unexpectedly loved. So we follow Fable who is the daughter of one of the most powerful traders on the Narrows and she was basically a abandoned on this island four years ago and has had to fend for herself. So the only goal that she really has that keeps her going is she wants to get off of this island with her own resources, find her father, and demand a rightful place on his crew. And to do so, she enlists the help of a young trader named West to get across the narrows to where her father is. And it, I mean, the pirate vibes are off the charts. It's a pirate YA fantasy book with another redheaded pirate girly at the helm. We love to see it. I would also like to be considered a redheaded pirate girly, even though I'm not a pirate, I could be in another life. So now I do have some honorable mentions, and these honorable mentions are books that are summer themed, have summer vibes, but I just haven't read yet, so I cannot completely verify. The first books that I want to bring up in this section are a continuation of our pirate theme, and that is All the Stars and Teeth and All the Tides of Fate by Adeline Grace, another pirate girly YA fantasy. So uh, Mora is the princess of an island kingdom, and she's been training her whole life to master this soul magic that she must inherit as the future ruler of the kingdom. Everyone else in the kingdom has a choice of their magic, but Amora does not. So her demonstration goes awry and she is forced to flee and there she strikes a bargain with Bastion, a rogue pirate captain, and he will help her prove that she's fit to rule if she helps him get his stolen magic back. And they meet a bunch of friends along the way and another pirate YA fantasy. And I, I kind of want to pick this one up now. Um, and on the back, it just says, Princess, pirate, stowaway, mermaid, the crew makes the queen. And I loved um, Adeline Grace's newest series, Belladonna, when I read it last summer, like literally an instant favorite. So I'm like, mm, 
I will probably really like this because I already like her writing. So I don't know, might need to pick it up soon. I'm getting inspired to read through all of the books that I own. <laughs> now that I'm making this video. And just one last book that I want to talk about today because me standing here in my book room in the heat that does not have an air conditioner in it and I do not have a fan on because I'm filming this video, I myself am getting hot and would like to go sit in the AC for a few minutes. So here, here's where we're at. Um, but the book that I want to talk about to round out this video that I really want to read that definitely has that hot setting in a fantasy world is City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. And this is the first in the David Bad Kingdom. Um, I also have The Kingdom of Copper. I do need to get the last book in the series, but um, again, another book I've owned for a long time. And I need to read, I know, I know, I kind of suck, it's okay. And this is set in a world that is inspired by 18th century Cairo, and Cairo is in Egypt, which is in Northern Africa, which is a very hot and arid desert climate. Nari has never believed in magic and she is basically a con woman on the streets of Cairo. Then she accidentally summons Dara who is a mysterious djinn. She is kind of forced to reconsider her beliefs. I don't know, the, the book flap just does it better than I can. It says, for Dara tells Nari an extraordinary tale. Across hot windswept sands teeming with creatures of fire and rivers where the mythical Mariad sleep past ruins of once magnificent human metropolises and mountains where the circling birds of prey are more than what they seem lies Devabad, the legendary city of brass, a city to which Nari is irrevocably bound. So to me, hot windswept sands teeming with creatures of fire, that is enough to sell me on the hot vibes of this book. So with that, those are a bunch of summer fantasy reading recommendations. I know sometimes in our hot girl summers we're like, let's just read rom-coms, but no. Now, there are more things that are summer themed in literature than just romance, even though I will be reading still a lot of romance this summer, but I will also be reading fantasy because I am a fantasy girly at heart. So let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know if you think of any additional books that you think would fit this theme and if you've read any of these books, what you think, and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.